Welcome to the webinar. We are sending live from a lab at the School of Industrial Engineering and Management. Please feel free to submit your questions during the webinar and the presenters will answer as many of them as possible at the end of the presentation. Please go ahead and start. Hello, uh, today me and my colleagues will present uh, the uh, master programs with a special uh, focus on sustainability. But first, let's introduce ourselves. I am Anders Malmqvist. I'm an uh, associate professor in energy technology with a special focus on uh, small-scale combined energy systems. Please, Sara. My name is Sara Ustedt and I'm a professor in product and service design. I teach at the master's program of integrated product design. And my research interests are in sustainable consumption and uh, user-centered design. Hello, my name is uh, Peter Hagström and I'm a lecturer at the Department of Energy Technology. I'm uh, responsible for the master program and Environmental Pathways for Sustainable Energy Systems, SELECT, which is an, an new energy program. My own uh, research interest is uh, bioenergy. I made a PhD on uh, bioenergy at the Swedish University of Agriculture Science 15 years ago. Hello, this is Mona Farshid. I'm the Associate Professor of Marketing. I'm working at the Industrial uh, Marketing and Entrepreneurship Division at ITM School. My research area is employer branding and digital marketing. And uh, here it is. Yeah. So you heard the academic part, now is the student part. Uh, my name is uh, Dragan Konstantin Anel. Uh, I am a student ambassador for uh, my master program and uh, to tell you a little bit about myself uh, I want to start with some kind of code uh, and uh, it says like that uh, a smooth sea never made a good uh, sailor so I like to have all my activities very very rough and to be uh, involved in many activities because I think that way you learn as many things as possible. So I don't know I'm very passionate about uh, sports and having uh, an active way of living and um, and I'm thinking to my uh, studies or uh, I don't know the things that uh, I like the most about academia I'm very uh, interested about uh, innovation, creativity, how you could uh, nurture um, the culture in order to have uh, innovative companies and how to be uh, a life-changing company or venture in order to uh, bring a greater good to society and to the economic world. Okay, so again, welcome to uh, our exciting research environment where diversity is a hallmark. Uh, our core knowledge and uh, uh, areas include uh, product design, product development, innovation, uh, nanotechnology, materials development, etc. Et uh, our school is located at KTH main campus in central Stockholm, uh, which you can see on this uh, picture. Uh, we are located uh, somewhere. Sara, could you point out uh, or highlight? Uh, yes, we are uh, just above the sports center. So we are surrounded by this beautiful forest uh, where you can go for runs or hikes and uh, breaks. And actually this forest is a Royal National Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, then we have uh, a couple of other campuses among them uh, campus Södertälje, which is uh, close to small and large industries. So a question, Konstantin, which campus are you studying at? Uh, I'm studying in the main campus from the Stockholm city and actually if I want to pinpoint uh, exactly in the campus where I'm studying, I think uh, most of the time you'll find me in the library <laughs> because uh, we have many things to study and readings to do. So yeah, if you want, uh, I can give you some tips uh, when you, where you can find uh, the best places there. <laughs> okay, thank you, Konstantin. So, uh, uh, based on uh, uh, interest, uh, uh, the ranking of KTH mm -hmm. uh, seems to be very important to all of us and to uh, probably to you listeners as well. Uh, our QS ranking in uh, specific subjects are number 26, both in mechanical engineering and in material science. 
In our world ranking, we are number 44 in mechanical engineering and number 48 in energy, and energy science and engineering. So I'm proud to work in the latter uh, area. Uh, at KTH, we are addressing sustainable development. And that's actually one of the uh, founding uh, pillars of our activities. And uh, as such, we are proud to have a very high ranking also, number seven worldwide. Uh, and uh, uh, sustainability is included in all our programs and you can find on the web page for each uh, program description the core sustainability development goals which are uh, particularly highlighted in that uh, area. So we have uh, in the ITM school many research areas and the four or the five of us uh, represent some of the areas and we will now briefly just tell a little bit about it. Myself, uh, as uh, mentioned, I belong to the energy department. Uh, there we have heat and power division, we have applied thermodynamics, uh, we have energy systems and uh, uh, climate studies as well. Uh, so in the heat and power department, we are addressing uh, technology for power generation as well as integration of systems to uh, obtain an efficient power generation. Peter, could you tell a little bit about the other areas? Yeah, I can continue because under, I uh, belong to the same department as uh, Anders, also the same division, heat and power technology. But uh, uh, heat and power and uh, applied thermodynamics have uh, two large uh, laboratories. We are standing in one of them right now, actually. So there are quite much uh, applied research and. Uh, going on, uh, lab uh, uh, exercises and so on, lab, uh, lab research. But besides that, uh, there are also a uh, division working on uh, more theoretical working on uh, systems analysis uh, and so on, on, energy systems analysis, climate studies, and uh, also developing uh, tools, methodologies uh, for, uh, for um, energy systems analysis, both uh, on geographically and uh, on a national level. Okay, so I'm in the department of um, machine design and uh, we have uh, um, several different research areas, engineering design, mechatronics, but I'm in the uh, area of integrated, um, uh, integrated development and design. And there we are, um, my particular area is, is uh, mainly sustainable development and lifestyles, but we're also working with innovation and organization of uh, uh, sustainable products and services. Uh, yes, um, I'm coming from the area of industrial management, specifically entrepreneurship and marketing department. And what we are doing over there, we're working with different angles of the market, specifically understanding what the customers are doing and the experience of them, managing brands and then using alternative databases, e-commerce applications and more uh, to the topics that we're working, how consumer empowerment can have implications in crowdsourcing, role of uh, artificial intelligence in the entrepreneurial opportunities and employer attractiveness in the IT um, industry. These are the areas that we're doing research today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh, in addition to these areas, we have uh, a couple more areas. And uh, there I just want to highlight the process uh, uh, development area. Uh, so in that field, uh, we are reinventing and refining industrial processes for better efficiency and use, and thus obtaining a bigger sustainability. Uh, now let's dig into the master programs. We have um, eight programs. We will uh, cover a few of them and uh, uh, in more detail. While uh, to start with the engineering design, uh, designing products and systems. Uh, that program addresses uh, sustainable development goals uh, seven, nine and twelve. Uh, 
and uh, on seven, clean energy for uh, everyone, clean and affordable energy. Uh, design of uh, efficient uh, devices for harvesting renewable energy sources is one of the important things. Uh, in the second program, uh, engineering material science, we have a very exciting project in Sweden going on. It's called Hybrid and the purpose is to uh, switch from coal in use in uh, iron manufacturing uh, to hydrogen instead. And within that program, uh, as a student, you will meet teachers and researchers being involved in that program. Uh, industrial management, uh, there it's specially highlighted gender and diversity. Uh, and uh, the program works uh, uh, directed towards supply chain strategies for improved sustainability. When it comes to integrated product design, Sora, would you please tell us more about that? Yes, we can switch here. So um, the program I'm working with is called uh, Integrated Product Design and the track is Industrial Design Engineering, which is really a, a design track. And um, at KTH, there's so much uh, amazing uh, developments in innovative development of technology. But what we're doing is to apply this technology in products and services. So a lot of focus for us is to understanding people. Uh, because if people don't want to use the products and services that we're developing, then there's, there's no use of it. So, so that's really our focus. So we, um, um, for example, we are, um, uh, have a course in service design, uh, which is now we're working with uh, Electrolux and we're looking at the future of, of plant-based food and how to, to cook that and how to enable people to, um, to do that more. So, so the focus is about um, understanding people and, and also the drivers for people to change or the hinders for them to do that and how we could uh, enhance their drivers uh, for uh, adopting a more sustainable lifestyle. So, and then uh, we use that insights to, to design products and services for a circular economy. So. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so, continuing with a few more master programs. Uh, the next one is in uh, production engineering and management. Uh, that is a program which is carried out in close cooperation with industry. And uh, one of the highlights is circular manufacturing. That is uh, reducing the waste and uh, uh, make the production, the use of materials and so on, and the reuse of materials uh, to a much higher degree. We also have a program uh, on sustainable product development, uh, which is uh, focusing on the setup of sustainable product chains. Here we can take an example of the uh, transportation need in a certain uh, process, uh, where you have, when you outsource things, you have a transport need between sub suppliers to the final. Uh, assembly plant and so on. And you also have a lot of transportation needs within your organization. So uh, trying to find better logistic chains is uh, one of the important things. Um, the next program, Sustainable Energy Engineering, is uh, uh, the program which I happen to be the program director for. Um, here I want to start with uh, presenting uh, three quite interesting or very interesting master thesis projects which was carried out the last couple of years. Uh, the left one is an example of uh, grid analysis and uh, smart grids, uh, students are modeling smart grids where we integrate uh, PV panels for example with energy storage and so on. And that can be carried out in uh, many different uh, application areas uh, throughout the world. Uh, the middle project 
that's also very exciting and it's a long-term project. It's concerning energy supply to uh, greenhouses in harsh environments, uh, ultimately in the planet Mars. Uh, and currently there are two projects ongoing, one in Antarctica and one in Morocco, uh, to uh, find out how this could be best accomplished. Uh, uh, on the right hand side uh, you see a concentrated solar uh, uh, harvesting device. It's a heliostat with a micro turbine in the focal point. Uh, that student uh, designed the control software for such a system. And for them to be able to do this we have a setup of uh, uh, three steps in our master program. We had the first semester with some mandatory courses in sustainable power generation, in uh, sustainable energy use, etc. Uh, for the second semester and the third semester, you specialize in one out of these four tracks. Uh, and there you have a certain amount of mandatory courses, but then you have a wide range of electives uh, within your particular field. And then the last semester of your master program, you finalize with a thesis dedicated to your particular area. So, Mana, please tell us about... Uh yes, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Management. Very interesting program. Uh, it's a one-year program, actually, and it's intensive with a couple of different uh, courses and at the end, the thesis for, for the students. But what we are doing here, we want to help everyone in the program to come up with new ideas and to let them know that what are the, the special ideas and the, the, um, the way that they can, can come up with opportunities for the, uh, for the startups and also how to collaborate inside the huge companies because it is important in co companies these days to work with entrepreneurship. So the, these are two different ways that we, we are giving, providing um, the content to the students. And actually, the aim of the program is to improve the employment opportunities because uh, it is very important from the sustainability perspective to increase more jobs. And then we wanted to help them to come up with business ideas and then we're coaching them about how to uh, innovate, how to be creative, how to come up with new creative business models and then identifying different business opportunities and for that we we wanted to uh, to um, contribute to the sustainable economy and then industrialization as well so we uh, besides those things our, our um, students they're going to learn how to become a very good customer meaning being uh, responsible to the consumption and how to come up with the ideas to have the responsible cons consumption and actually production of different applications so how they can come up with actually running a business from the from the very beginning to the end and then this happens throughout the whole year in two different semesters and then uh, last um, semester it's about writing uh, thesis. So during this one year it is a very intensive program however we try to have some additional activities working with the venture capitals, working with other areas um, and departments in, in the whole school, business school because um, they can help the students with, uh, with their startups in the very nice ecosystem in Stockholm here. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the courses that you're taking, Konstantin? You're, you've been in this process. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm in the full, uh, full haste of, uh, of the program. So, uh, but first I, I want to, to start uh, how I choose this master program and uh, somehow why Stockholm, why Sweden, why KTH, because uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think or I think for every um, student, it's a very important decision that you have to take. I mean, the master and uh, what do you want to study further? And also the country and the university, because, yeah, uh, I think the main uh, purpose of a um, university is, as you said, to increase the um, employability. 
so that person could find a job and also somehow figure it out what is uh, his or her future career. So yeah, I finished my bachelor and uh, I took a year just to think of, <laughs> of that because uh, I think it's very important and yeah, it's a very hard uh, introspective exercise to do, but uh, I somehow the response was, or I can summarize it in some keywords like top university, sustainability, and somehow business related and innovation because I talk with many friends and uh, somehow professionals and they advise me that you have to pick a domain that uh, is going to be here in the next 10 years and 15 years. So yeah, I just search on, uh, on the internet uh, what are the top universities in Europe and um, wh which, are, which are the best. So KTH was <laughs> Uh, one of the best and uh, actually this master program for me it was perfect because as you said is uh, one year and I didn't want to spend that much time on studying I also because I'm more of, uh, of a person that uh, likes to learn by doing so this master program uh, fit very well with uh, with what I wanted and yeah to tell you a little bit about uh, the master yeah, it's intense. <laughs> I mean, intense uh, describes very well this uh, this program. For instance, the first term, uh, as you know, it, we had uh, three courses, and somehow the, those ones were the basis for I don't know the industrial environment, and I think those ones are very useful because lots of my colleagues uh, are coming from the engineering part, so do, uh, they don't have uh, that much the business concepts or the economic mindset, let's say. Uh, and those ones were perfect to, to build that knowledge and uh, further to um, learn about what is innovation, what, what's with this buzzword, because I thought I, I knew what innovation means, but actually now, um, uh, now I'm doing the um, course on um, uh, management of innovation and creativity and now I don't know nothing about innovation because <laughs> yeah, the, the professor completely ruined my uh, perspective and now I really know what I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that's a very important thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm looking further for the... Um, next course is to uh, figure it out what's with the innovation and how uh, we can drive innovation in every uh, corner of our business world or in our so society or community. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so in addition to these uh, programs, we have a number of uh, joint master programs which you tell us more about. Yes, joint master's program. So uh, that's master programs where we have um, partners. Uh, uh, other, there are other uni universities then. Uh, so it's a and uh, on this slide you see four of them. Then. The Densis, this decentralized smart energy system, uh, a new one, new master program which will uh, start next autumn. Uh, the second one here, you know. Innovative Sustainable Energy Engineering, it's a joint Nordic, so it's a, a, a joint master program in uh, five uh, Nordic universities then. Uh, so there are different tracks on bioenergy, energy systems, uh, renewable energy. Uh, Thrust is also a, a program, a joint, uh, where uh, one of the partners are Duke University in US actually, so it's not only European, there's also one, one partner in the uh, US. USA. And uh, it's uh, on uh, turbo machinery. And the last one here is then uh, SELECT, uh, s which is one of the InnoEnergy master programs. So uh, InnoEnergy, which is an uh, EU body, uh, they have uh, uh, seven master programs in total, where KTH is a partner in five of them. And uh, today uh, KTH is coordinating two of them. That is uh, SELECT and another one is uh, SENSE. Uh, uh, some uh, response for the SELECT program here at KTH, I will tell you some more about the SELECT program then. So uh, the full name is Environomic Pathways for Sustainable Energy Systems. So uh, environomics is not so common, so uh, 
that uh, environomics is a methodology where you uh, analyze both energy uh, costs and uh, environmental impact in, in uh, the same methodology. So it's a quite a new method, it's uh, only uh, around 20-30 uh, yeah, years old. Uh, but the program is about uh, analyzing energy systems. And uh, in all the energy, in energy programs, it's quite a large focus on uh, innovation, business and entrepreneurship. So uh, I may say that that is one difference to this uh, program compared to sustainable energy engineering, which uh, you Anders um, described before. Uh, and uh, we have two big uh, career courses in the program, uh, one for the first year and one for the second year. And uh, for uh, preparing the students for these uh, projects that they will work on, we, will, we start with introducing them in project management, uh, business and entrepreneurship in the beginning of the program. And then they are working in a, a large project during the first year, which we call Grand Challenge Education, because uh, all of them are uh, uh, projects uh, given by clients, by companies. And uh, on this slide here, you see the four projects which are running this year. And uh, we have uh, different clients and uh, all uh, partners in the program is also involved. So uh, we actually have uh, one project here in Sweden, uh, anal energy analysis of uh, Skeppsholmen, uh, where Sveco, the Swedish consulting company, is involved also as uh, supervising. And then we have uh, one uh, project in Poland, optimization of power generation from PVs and power use by consumers, uh, where the company Inogi in Poland is the client. Third one, uh, third project is a project in uh, Spain. Uh, it's a, a company Estabanel, which uh, they are interested in uh, their customers' uh, need and behavior. Uh, so uh, that's a project about that, uh, how to, to, uh, to study that uh, more in detail. And the last one here, techno-economic analysis, is, uh, is a project given by um, Polito in Italy, Politecnico di Torino, which is a project within um, Horizon, Horizon 2020, so it's, that's more research-based project, I would say. Uh, in the second year, uh, they are doing another uh, project, uh, we call it Integrated Project of the Year, and uh, in the second year we give the students more uh, responsibility themselves, because in the first, first year we uh, serve them, uh, we give them the projects, but in the second year the students have to come up with the, students, uh, the, with the projects uh, themselves, actually. So, uh, here you see five of the projects which were uh, performed uh, last year and uh, they are uh, run in uh, different parts of the, of the world. Many of them in uh, Asia here actually, uh, Kuik Research, uh, Research was a project in uh, Thailand and uh, the Sahel Solar Water Pump System was a project in uh, Africa and so on. And uh, many of them, they are focused on uh, uh, analyzing and developing um, solutions for uh, renewable energy on, uh, on islands or in more regional uh, areas in uh, countries. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, I get a lot of questions towards the end of master programs. How to continue to pursue PhD studies? Do you get that as well? Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. We're getting those questions, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually at ITM we have seven fields of uh, research areas for PhD uh, students. Uh, six of them are within the fields we already covered in this webinar. And the seventh is on teaching and learning as well. Uh, we will not go into detail, but uh, we can mention that around 20% of the students at KTH, the master students, uh, continue with the PhD uh, studies uh, somewhere in the world, some at KTH, some in other universities. Uh, at KTH, uh, the program is a four-year program containing three years of research uh, activities and one year of uh, uh, course studies, uh, third cycle uh, courses. And normally the courses are taken in the beginning of the uh, program and in the later part you are focusing more on your research to become 
uh, ultimately an independent researcher. Uh, we offer, uh, to those who are enrolled, we offer uh, employment during this period. And also after uh, finishing, uh, after four years, you are uh, entitled to uh, apply for a permanent residence uh, ship in Sweden. Uh, and for those of you who are not aiming for uh, academic studies, uh, there are excellent career opportunities. Uh, so, for example, uh, in our statistics, we recognize that uh, about 50% of the students already has their job arranged when they graduate. Uh, and uh, the Swedish Migration Board also offers a one-year uh, residence permit where you can uh, use the time for job seeking, finding a PhD position or whatever uh, is needed. Uh, we have a large amount of industrial-induced uh, degree projects and uh, many of the students uh, taking those projects get their first job through this, uh, uh, their degree project. Uh, around 15% of the students also listen to the entrepreneurship uh, part of our education and decide to start their own businesses. And to support such businesses, we have uh, several uh, entities which can support the business creation. Uh, among them, KTH Innovation and also Inno Energy has uh, a branch in at KTH where they can support the business yes. set up. Uh, okay, let's see. Then we talked about career. Let's see. Let's hear about, <laughs> if, yeah. uh, before the career, uh, yeah. the uh, student life. Exactly, yeah. So uh, before going to the adult life, let's say, uh, I will talk a little bit about um, what does it mean actually the student life on uh, KTH. Uh, so I don't know if how well uh, you can see the photos that I put there, but um, I think for me the the point when I was very conscious that okay I'm not anymore home I'm in a plane I see Sweden from above it's very large and now then I realize okay it, it's something completely different uh, and I in my opinion or how I imagine it's a life-changing experience so for you who want to study abroad or do uh, some kind of program like that I really advise you to do because uh, at least for me until now it was very nice and um, talking about uh, the student life at KTH I think KTH is doing a wonderful job on integrating uh, students and um, I don't know uh, just putting them in contact with uh, friends or with the uh, Swedish culture because here there are many uh, programs like a body program you'll have an actual uh, student that uh, could be here from uh, Sweden or could be from uh, another year and uh, he can he can told you uh, about I don't know tips and tricks how to deal with the transportation uh, the accommodation or uh, how which are the nicest bar that you can visit or I don't know what what are the sweet spots uh, in uh, Stockholm uh, that you must see uh, and also um, it's another interesting thing uh, it was the um, international reception. So somehow the courses uh, start uh, in uh, September or uh, late August and uh, you, you can arrive in uh, Stockholm on the 1st of August or in the middle of August, something like that. I think it's a very good uh, choice if you uh, want to do because uh, you can be accustomed with uh, the city and know a little bit more about what's actually happening here. <laughs> and there uh, we had so many uh, activities like a gask, it's, uh, it's the traditional uh, Swedish dinner. Uh, and it was very fun, at least for me. I don't know how it's uh, in real in families or something like that, but this one was with over 50 people. But it, it was very nice. Also, we had some uh, city tours to see uh, the, the sites from Stockholm. 
And I think the big point of uh, this uh, international reception was uh, the OSVIC. It was an event uh, in a cabin, uh, I think on 20 kilometers uh, from Stockholm. And it was absolutely amazing. Uh, we had bonfire, a sauna, then we could jump uh, directly into the Baltic Sea to, uh, to swim. And it, I don't know how uh, it is for others, but for me it was completely amazing and uh, unforgettable. <laughs> I mean, I think the, this uh, word describes this uh, better. Uh, to give you some tips and tricks, let's say, uh, I think uh, you have to find a very good uh, hairdresser because, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know how uh, is in other countries, but from uh, where I am from Romania, uh, the hairdresser is not that uh, uh, such a deal, but here in Stockholm, it's uh, it's quite expensive, I, I could say so, but I managed to find a very good hairdresser and on a student price, let's say. And also another um, tip on how you can uh, save some money or yeah, to spend it on uh, another more interesting things, it's uh, to learn how to cook. Because also here on the campus, uh, you have many facilities where you can um, warm up your food and uh, eat it. And that, that I think it's a very, uh, very convenient place. And, uh, ah, sorry, uh, another one back. Uh, and uh, yeah, to finalize this uh, experience, uh, I can say, I don't know, four things that uh, you could do. So the first one, don't forget the scope while you are here, so study hard. <laughs> I think that this is the, the main point because, uh, yeah, it's very intense and it's very, how to say it, academic and you run so many things and you have to, to have a focus in order to gain as much as possible from this experience. Um, Secondly, I think also you have to uh, play hard uh, and, I don't know, go to as many parties as possible, make as many friends as possible, because somehow by having a balance uh, between the fun and the study, I think the study then it's more uh, relaxing. And, I don't know, do sports. Uh, I really believe that uh, doing sports is uh, very beneficial for you. And Stockholm, in my opinion, it's the perfect place because I think in Stockholm is the perfect mix mixture between um, the nature and uh, the urban area, let's say. For instance, uh, near my home I have a large forest and I'll go there for running or I have an outside gym and because I like uh, cr um, CrossFit and I don't know, for, for me it's, uh, it's a very good place where uh, you could have uh, both the study, the fun part with the parties and also study very, very hard. Yeah. And uh, yeah, <laughs> now talking about the student ambassador program, actually this is the, reasons why, uh, the reason why I'm here. Uh, first, I want to tell you about how I ended up here, <laughs> uh, being a student ambassador. Uh, I think uh, this uh, came from my uh, desire to help the other students, because, for instance, uh, not long ago I was in uh, your same place, uh, a year ago, and yeah, I know, sometimes it's hard to find the right information, and it's very uh, tough to figure it out, okay, uh, it's good this program, it's good this city, it's good this university. And in those moments, uh, you want to, um, uh, to learn as many things as possible and to see the, the right things. Yeah, so if you have any other questions, you can uh, look on our website and uh, ask us questions, I mean the student ambassadors. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Konstantin. So it's, uh, now it's just one step uh -huh. uh, left for you all, <laughs> uh, and that is how to apply. As you can see in this slide, uh, there are certain admission requirements that you have to qualify. You have to uh, get familiar with the uh, uh, fees that apply, application fee, and uh, for one fee you can apply for four different programs. Uh, and the third part uh, where you must use your creativity is to arrange the funding. 
if you are a lucky one, then you can get a scholarship. And actually on Sunday, KTH scholarships open and uh, there are scholarships within KTH, within the Swedish Institute and uh, also external scholarships. Also, I think Inno Energy has uh, certain program for scholarships. Yes, uh, it has. And uh, so Inno Energy has their own application <coughs> procedure. So uh, I would advise you to uh, have a look on the Inno Energy Master School webpage where you find all the information because there are a different application period and so on. And uh, Inno Energy also have uh, their own scholarship. Uh, but it's also uh, good if you can check which scholarships which are available available in your own country and so on, if you will have any own in your okay. own country. Okay, thank you, Peter. Mm. So, uh, how to apply them practically? Uh, you have to choose the program, you have to submit your application, uh, and then uh, you can see some deadlines. The important deadline is uh, January 15th and uh, 3rd of February when you must pay your application fee. And then in April you will uh, find out the results. So uh, please don't wait. There, there is a lot of things to uh, arrange to submit the application. Uh, and don't wait for the last day when the internet is broken and so on. So please go ahead and do it as soon as possible. So thank you very much for listening and now it's time for your questions. Thank you for the presentation. We have received a lot of questions. First one is to Sarah. What kind of work can I get locally after graduating from Masters in Integrated Product Design? Well, um, yeah, our students uh, do a wide variety of, of things. Some of them work as uh, product designers. They work with um, um, service, and service design. Some of them work with uh, um, user interfaces, user experience. Uh, others work more engineering based, like uh, uh, product design engineering. Um, so um, I think that what you, what you do learn a lot of is a method, um, a, pr a process for developing new products and services and solutions based on users' um, um, needs and wishes and also the context where the, uh, the innovation or the solution is, is, is made from. So it's, uh, um, it's, it's pretty wide, but it's definitely uh, user-centered, if that's answered the question. <laughs> well, locally, um, I mean, that depends on where you're from, of course. Um, um, but I would say that uh, there's a lot of um, um, employability. All our students have jobs, many of them, you know, straight after um, their graduation. Thank you. Next question. I am planning to apply for a master's in sustainable energy engineering and it requires a degree project proposal as an application requirement. Could you give some guidance on how to go about writing it and whether there is any formal to be format to be followed? Well, uh, do you have an input on this, Peter? S sustainable energy engineering? Yeah. Uh, no. no <laughs> because okay, so since <laughs> that's my program. I just wanted to ask you first. Yeah. Uh, so the... Uh, uh, you, you have to write that, you can write it uh, just uh, on a plain sheet of paper. Uh, you describe what you would like to do, what you intend to do, how uh, this is supposed to be carried out. Uh, so I can imagine it, it's not uh, very formal how it should be written, but you should uh, express and uh, describe what you intend to do or what you would like to do. Thank you. This next question is from Mana. What is the recommendation level of math for the Master Entrepreneurship and Innovation Management? I have a Bachelor in Business Administration. Would this be sufficient? 
Well, uh, one of the uh, requirements for the program is uh, to have the technical or engineering background since we are in the technical university here and we are providing the entrepreneurship and innovation management to the engineers. And the thing is, they need uh, to, ha to know uh, mathematics and more specifically statistics uh, for, for for running their own business and it's important to know the accounting financing but we're providing a lot of uh, opportunities and courses and mm -hmm. topics for them to for the engineers to to uh, come into the business yeah. area so to say um, yes the, it, there is a need but uh, we can provide a lot of uh, courses and opportunities here at KTH as mm -hmm. well Is it easy to get a position in a research group, especially within the product and management program? Product and management program? Mm. Well, I, I, I can mention the, the way to get a position in a research group. Uh, there must be a project, there must be a position which has its proper funding. And uh, since it was uh, presented before, uh, uh, as a PhD uh, student, uh, then you get an employment and there must be funding available for that. Uh, we also get questions uh, from master students on doing internships or, or uh, additional work within the research project as kind of uh, broadening the uh, uh, knowledge and deepening it in a specific field. And uh, uh, that's up to uh, the research leader, uh, many times there are opportunities. Uh, so my advice is to discuss that when you're here, discuss that with your teacher in the specific object, uh, subject. I, I can add that um, mm. um, <clears throat> sometimes it's, um, I mean, we get a lot of, of uh, questions from our students if they could do um, the final exam job um, in, in our research. And that is quite easy to, to arrange. So if you're uh, interested in research and uh, you can always talk to your teachers, what kind of research are they doing? And is it possible to do your, your final graduation work there? That, that I would say is for in our group at least quite easy. Yes, definitely in yeah. our department. Mm -hmm. uh, all the professors and teachers, they're, they're having occasionally presenting their research in the department that students mm -hmm. can attend mm -hmm. those occasions and understand who's doing what and what are the interesting areas. And then mm -hmm. definitely, yes, mm -hmm. they can contact mm -hmm. the teacher and talk about those opportunities. And we're also trying to, to um, to mix research and teaching and to integrate them and to, to, to teach um, um, about our recent research. So, so there's an um, integration there. Mm -hmm. I may also add that uh, mm. th there is a possibility within KTH to uh, part-time employ uh, also master students. It's called amanuensis and that, that can be up to maximum 20% uh, of uh, full-time work because you should also carry out your studies as the main, as, as you pointed out, Constantine, the, yeah, the studies yeah. are <laughs> the ma exactly. major importance. Uh, anyway, uh, this can be possible, but again, it requires funding for, for that particular position. Is it possible to study elective courses in the first year? which program, it depends on which program you're talking about, but I can s talk about entrepreneurship and innovation. Actually, there is only one year and we're not providing elective courses because it's they're, they're mandatory courses that it's included into program and we don't, that, we don't have that much time to, to add anything else. Uh, but for the other programs, I would say on the first year or second year, it depends on the program. So uh, that it has differs. To be, uh, clearly looked upon in the KTH webpage where mm. such information should be available. That's true. But, but all of the two-year master's program have room for elective courses, yeah. 
uh, we tend to not have it in the first term because then people are new so it's good to have like a, a, a setup uh, where everything is served but for the second term and third term there's a lot of space for for elective courses yeah. mm. uh, for the select program uh, uh, we have actually implemented a new course uh, this year uh, where uh, uh, electricity, electric uh, power systems are included in that, in that course. And uh, that's uh, due to that in many of the projects that we are running in the first year are uh, much on uh, smart grids, they are on electric power systems. So we saw a need for that. Mm. So, the, so we have actually increased that in the curriculum for the first year in SELECT. Is the teaching done with in-house staff and professors or are there any guest lectures from other universities' companies that also come to take classes? Can I take that one? Yeah. <laughs> In our program, we're having the uh, the opportunity to bring a lot of people from the industry that who had the the um, experience of having their own startups and working in big companies and uh, actually we're inviting them to to different courses to give us the the um, guest lecture uh, but the main courses and the fundamentals and academic and theoretical things is held by the professors at the university but yes of course we're having guest lectures from the industry because we believe at KTH of a very close connection with the industry mm. hmm? and uh, most of the programs have um, uh, projects running together with the industry, which also includes uh, lectures from the industry. Uh, we have most of our, our um, um, courses uh, in design, at least, are challenge-driven projects uh, together with uh, some industry or organization. And many of them, the big ones like IKEA or Electrolux or, or Scania, for example, so, uh, also, if I <laughs> may, uh, may I add up, um, for instance, we have a course that um, it's on uh, business model innovation and a part of that course, uh, and it's a very uh, innovative and novel thing, uh, because also the professor said, uh, so we have to um, work with different uh, ventures and startup companies from KTH Innovation or um, Karolinska Innovation and at least for me that was a very interesting uh, thing to do because yeah I like to have the base of um, knowledge from the academic perspective but I also want to see okay how is this applied into the business and into the outside and commercial world. So, in my opinion, I think um, we have plenty of interactions with uh, the business and, yeah, it's, it's a very good mixture, in my opinion. Next question is for Peter. What is the application procedure for SELECT joint program? Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> Uh, I mentioned the University Master School webpage where you find all the information. But uh, actually, the application period will start now, more or less in, in December, and then uh, it will be opened until uh, in February. So uh, that's the timeline uh, when you uh, can apply. And then the evaluation process will, will uh, go on. And uh, that leads to that you will probably be informed in um, April, May about the result of the, um, of the review of the applicants, the admission. Yeah. There's a few questions regarding master thesis and uh, one is, is it hard to find and is it, do you have to find a master thesis before you start your program? Would you like to uh, I can, uh, so actually for, for our program, we're providing different opportunities to the students to find a company to work with. And then we're helping them to come up with the idea what is a very good research area 
for, from their interests and then we're helping them to find the specific problems that can be solved by doing the research. Mm -hmm. And as, as Sara mentioned before, most of the uh, projects works with, with the problem. So what is happening in reality and how we want to sol solve them and help to solve the problem. Um, and we are helping the students to come up with the ideas of the thesis and, uh, and, and coach them in a way to end up with a good proposal. Yep. So, yeah, um, uh, our master thesis are done in cooperation with a company or um, an organization. And there's a list on, there's a special website on KTH where companies or organization um, uh, write suggestions for for uh, master thesis so they can it's very easy to go in there and check what's available and then contact a company and um, so there you can that's where most of our students get their master thesis proposal for and then you always this like a negotiation between the company what they want and what we want from from kth and what the student wants and then you come up with something in the end uh, one interesting thing also, which is also part of the Swedish legislation, is that you as a student at the Swedish university and as an, or as an employee at the Swedish university, you own the rights to what you produce. And uh, if the thesis is carried out within KTH, then it's not a problem. But sometimes when you do it with the company, they uh, want the results to be confidential mm -hmm. and uh, then we have a conflict of interest uh, so that is one of the things that needs to be sorted out before you start the project another thing is to find within KTH a suitable uh, supervisor uh, and that can take time uh, when it runs towards when most students start their thesis be a bottleneck to find this supervisor because they might already be allocated. So this is to start elaborating all already at the end of the first year or even earlier what you would like to do and pinpoint people, companies and so on. What are the differences between select program and sustainable energy engineering program in terms of the corsets? They seem 